Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Tony from Safe Haven. Oh, man, I'm just enjoying a beautiful day out here. And uh, I figured I'd get on the interwebs and share this little message with y'all. Um, so uh, it, it's funny, this was sparked by uh, uh, a post that I saw in one of the forums I'm, I'm a part of. And it was like, if I know that this person checks all the bar the boxes of being a narc like why is it why can i not accept that fact and i'm going to share from my experience i was with two narcissistic individuals one had was overt um and one was more covert one was more violent one was more manipulative um, in fact, one was violent, period. The other one, you know, never raised their voice at me, ever. However, the same instances or the same tactics or the same behaviors were replete with both. Lying, manipulating, changing the facts, gaslighting, everything. And this is what helps me to break the denial is staying grounded in the truth. So one of the things that I did when I broke up with um, my my next was that I wrote down all the, the things, all the feelings that I had, all the bad feelings I had, all the times I felt ignored, disrespected, unwanted, rejected, manipulated, lied to. I wrote those things down. I wrote down all the half-truths. I wrote down all the explanations for the hurts. I wrote down all the times I felt depressed because I did things for this person, even though I knew it wasn't the best for me, but I did did it because I thought I was sacrificing for them. I wrote all it down and then I kept rewriting it because for me, when I rewrite something, not only do I refine it, but it helps me to dig up things that are sitting in the background and it helps me to constantly remind myself of the truth. See, the only way to break denial of the fact that your narcissistic ex is really a narc and it's really over and you really need to get away from this person or these people is you have to stay grounded in the truth. Now, and it has to be an intentional kind of thing. It has to uh, be about you constantly reminding yourself, no matter how good it feels when they do get in touch and I'm I'm big on this, right? I've made this mistake multiple times. They'll get back in touch. Hey, I was thinking about you, whatever, whatever, whatever. They'll start saying things like, you know, I always care about you. You know, I always love you. You know, it's always been about us. I've always had these feelings for you, blah, blah, blah. And those rose tinted glasses can go right back on. And that's it. No kind of sense, right? Next thing you know, it's like, well, maybe I would be better if I restarted a relationship with them. Maybe it would be better if we rebuilt. And then they would go and show me why it's not the case, right? They'll start backtracking. They'll start saying one thing and then doing another. Uh, or they'll say one thing and then when they con when confronted, they're like, oh no, that's not what I meant. You're misreading. And then comes the gaslighting and all the other stuff, right? So the only way really to get out of that denial is you've got to stay grounded in the truth and you have to be intentional. I tell this to people all the time and I tell this to myself, right? It's very easy. Some of y'all narcs may never have hit y'all or cursed you out or anything like that. However, they lied to y'all. They've manipulated y'all. They've taken from y'all. They've robbed you of time, money, resources, supply, all that good stuff. They've ran out on y'all. They've abandoned you and the children or they've abandoned you and then they've come back like nothing happened or they put themselves in your orbit so you can initiate the conversation. But they won't like they won't actually like Hoover Hoover, but they'll Hoover. Right. So like they won't come to you and say, hey, I miss you. What about us? They'll just start coming up in your orbit like, hey, I'm going to the store. You need anything? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. They'll come around and hope that you'll reach out and snag them back in. And it's easy to do that because, listen, 
you know, when you're comfortable with someone and you feel that you truly love somebody, you're going to, you know, put, put aside a lot of the nonsense and try to work through things. That's, that's a logical explanation. That's a logical, uh, you know, conclusion to the matter, right? Oh, you know, maybe they had to go outside and learn their lesson and now they're really focused on me. I guarantee you 99% of the time they don't learn their lesson. 99% of the time they're not interested in actually rebuilding relationship. They just want the benefits. They want the security or they want to have a boost to their ego, right? So say, for instance, they left you. They got with somebody new. That new person dumped them, okay? And now they're swinging around you like, hey, it's always been you. It's always been about you. It didn't work out with them because I still have feelings for you. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> okay? And that's not the absolute truth. The absolute truth is they don't want to feel alone or they don't want to feel rejected completely. So they're going to go with somebody that they know will accept them for the time being. The old future fake lies, sweet talk, yada, yada, have all these epiphanies. I'm sorry. I realized I was wrong. And then the moment you start opening back up to them, the moment you start letting them back into your fold, all of a sudden, here come the doubts. Here comes the questions. Here comes the, oh, I don't know if this is what I want. I don't know if we're right for each other. I don't know if we can rebuild after all the drama we've been through. And you could be out here saying, listen, I'm willing to rebuild. I'm willing to push forward. I'm willing to, you know, do this for the family. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they'll hit you with the, oh, you know, Cheryl from accounting. Yeah, I still have feelings for her. I realize that. I, I want to see, you know, where that goes, right? And now you're left broken. Now you're having to re-grieve the process. And here's the thing. Every breakup takes longer to get over, believe it or not. And I'm speaking from experience. It doesn't get easier to bounce back. It gets harder to bounce back. It doesn't get easier to say goodbye. It gets harder to say goodbye. Because every time there's a, 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 a small voice in the back of your head that's going, nah, this ain't it. This ain't it. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. No, no, no. And next thing you know, they say the right thing. They do the right thing for a few days, a few hours, whatever. And then you let your guard down. And then, boom. You're right back to square one. All the progress you made in healing is now out the window. All the support that you got from friends and family has now been trashed because you're now backtracking. You're pulling away from people who are good to you. Because here's what else happens. When you get back with a narcissistic individual or you get back with someone who's unhealthy for you, it doesn't have to be a narc, but it's someone who's not good for you. You automatically, because you know it ain't right, right? Or you want to give it time before you start, you know, airing it out like, yeah, we're back together, yada, yada. You start pulling away from your support group. You start pulling back from the forums. You start pulling away from friends, from family. You start going into yourself, right? You start feeling not as bright and bubbly because this person, this individual who's got, who's fighting their own demons is coming and bringing that dark cloud with them. You're also feeling lack of self-respect for yourself because not only did they hurt you, they either may have ran out on you. They may have cheated on you. They may have hurt your children by running out on them and all this other stuff. And now you've taken them back in and your inner voice is telling me like, man, you a fool if you let them back in, right? So now all of a sudden, now you're dealing with that. Now you're, you're, you're fighting your own inner voice because you're like, yeah, I, I shouldn't have let them back in, right? And I guarantee you within a few hours, they're already showing their narcissistic traits. They're already talking about themselves. They're already exaggerating stuff. They're already making themselves look to be bigger than life. They're already out here plotting to move on from you, right? They're already out here making demands or they're already out here making promises. They have zero intention of fulfilling, right? And you know this subconsciously, you know this and it hurts, right? But you bottle up, you're like, I'm going to do it. Maybe this will work out. And they don't. They run out and you're back to square one. The best advice... Go no contact or go low contact if you have kids together. Don't discuss anything beyond 
what you absolutely need. Keep it short. Keep it sweet and simple. If you don't got kids, yo, block them on everything. Keep it moving. Don't worry about it. If they're giving your number to your friend, their friends, whatever, change your number if you got to. Block them on social media. Don't check for them on social media because guarantee they putting out lies and BS. All right? They will sit up there and post about the person they're with. Oh, I'm so in love with this person. I can't believe it. And they will be in your inbox like, yo, what's good? How are you? You know, I just want to get a coffee and talk. We never had closure, okay? They out here. And don't fall for that nonsense. See, in Hollywood, in romance movies, in rom-coms, they always make that look cute, right? Oh, so-and-so's with somebody else, and they're coming back to you, you know, and they're looking at you like, oh, I miss you. You know, listen, sometimes when we break up with people or healthy or whatever, and we go on somewhere else, we realize what we have with this person. And we may come back and realize, hey, listen, I messed up. I'm sorry. I hurt you. What, you know, if you'll have me, what can I do to rebuild your trust? Right? And that's a healthy way of doing it. Right? A lot of people are going to tell you, listen, the next is the next for a reason. Don't move back, move forward. And that's also good. There's, in that case, there's no right or wrong answer. You got to go by what's best for you in particular. Right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you block the narcissist, they're going to be out here looking for you, especially if you were darn good to them. Because I guarantee you, you are one in a million. See, there's a lot of people in this world. There's a lot of people. There's billions of people. And yes, there are no, there is no such thing as soulmates. They're just people who really get us and the people who don't, right? But then there's that small subgroup of people. And it is a small subgroup of people, right? that really, really intertwine and they come into our lives and they make it better, right? Now, for you, you may have been that model wife, that model husband, that person who did what they had to do to build up the other person. And guess what? The universe does not have, it doesn't believe, it believes in paying its debts, right? You will get recompense for that. Maybe not through a relationship, but maybe your career taking off, maybe your health getting better, maybe your mental clarity repairing itself, whatever the case may be, you will get that love that you've given out. You will get it back, whether it's from other people, whether it's from, you know, things in your life uh, moving forward, you're going to get it back. That's that's a fact, right? That's the law of karma. Just like all the destruction and everything that they've done. They're going to reap that. Whatever you sow, you shall also reap. That's a Bible verse. That's also just a, a, a thing of life. If you sow dead seeds, you're going to get death. You're going to get no fruit. You're going to get nothing. If you sow good seeds, you're going to get crops. You're going to get a harvest. You're going to have food to last you through the winter. Right? So continue sowing those seeds. Continue being an upstanding person. Continue being loving, being kind. Uh, looking to help others, looking to build other people up. Don't stop. Don't become a jerk. Uh, don't become one of these individuals that's like, oh, you know, all men are crap or all women are crap or this. Don't become one of those, all right? The world doesn't need more of hate and people pushing each other away. The world needs unity. It needs love. It needs people who are building up, who are pouring into others. That's what the world needs. We have a lot of selfishness and selfishness is breeding selfishness. I'm seeing a lot of, especially in the age of social media and dating apps and all that, I'm seeing a lot of people, men and women, who are turning more and more into their narcissistic side. They're hurting the other partner. The other partner then either dumps or, or gets dumped by them. And then that other partner says, you know what? Screw all women. Screw all men. Whatever. Just be about myself. I, I want to be free. Right? And so now you've got this other narcissism going on, right? So for example, um, I, I have a few friends who, you know, their ladies ran out on them, they cheated on them or whatever, classic textbook narcs, uh, narc wives. And now they're all about like, oh, you know, forget women and I'm just gonna be about myself and, you know, I'm gonna spin plates and I'm gonna just be out here, you know, slinging the, 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 the ramen noodle, whatever, and that's it. And now they're out here hurting people and running people down with their antics, right? Um, and they're now becoming more and more narcissistical. Uh, I think that's the right word, right? Or more, more narcissistic. There we go. Because that's what it breeds, right? It's, it's, it, it's a problem. When people 
start turning into themselves and saying it's all about me and less about everyone else, that's when problems come up, right? That's why we have so many issues with people who are angry that they have to wear a mask, right? It's like, well, I, I don't want to wear a mask. If I want to breathe the air, I can't. Yeah, no one's telling you you can't, but, you know, hey, listen, there are other people out here who may have compromised immune systems, uh, uh, like, you know, old people, kids, whatever. Let's think about the, ah, you know, survival of the fittest, yada, yada. It, it's a lot of selfishness out here. A lot. Okay? But that's kind of off topic. The point of the matter is this. If you're in denial or if you're having problems being okay with the fact that your ex is narcissistic or has narcissistic tendencies or is acting in a narcissistic way, remember, they have to be clinically diagnosed to have MPD to be, you know, legally termed narcissistic, right? But... But if they are checking off the boxes, they're lying to you, they're manipulating you, their words are not meeting their actions, they're saying one thing, they're doing another, they're always gaslighting, they're always manipulating, they're always making you to be the bad one, then dump they butt and keep it moving, right? Move on with your life. It does not matter. You cannot love them enough to, for them to get right. They will never see the quality of the type of person you are. They will never comprehend or truly appreciate you and truly look at you and be like, you're the one and truly mean it. Yeah, you're the one for right now or you're the one that gave them a, a shelter for them to really, you know, build themselves up and then they're out, right? You're the one for that, but you're not their one. You may think that they are your one, but here's another thing. They're not your one either, believe it or not. An abuser is never the one for you. A person who lies and manipulates is never the one for you. Never. So doesn't matter how long you've been with this person, how much history you have with this person, and how much nonsense you've been through, or maybe in the beginning of the relationship they weren't like this, they're not the one for you now. Focus on yourself, focus on building yourself up, focus on pouring into others, focus on building other people up, and eventually you're going to find that one who's going to be attracted to that aura, and they really are going to pour into you as you pour into them. They're going to make you help you grow as you help them grow. All right? So listen, with that being said, you want to break the denial, break the trauma bond, which is the, the cause of that denial is a trauma bond. What is a trauma bond? A trauma bond is... When you are mentally addicted to the feelings and chemicals that get released when this person is on their good behavior with you. And when they're bad or when they hurt you, it's so powerful, right? But when they're good, oh my goodness, it feels so good, right? And it's akin to, oh, look at, look at Kirk over here trying to get a cameo. And it's Kirk, not Kurt. Kirk, like Captain Kirk, James T. Kirk from the Starship Enterprise. Live long and prosper. Anyway, um, okay, buddy, you're doing too much. So, like I was saying, you, you know, in order to break that trauma bond that's causing that denial, you got to ground yourself in the truth. Keep watching the narc videos. Keep writing things down. If you got to write, you write your list down two, three times a day on fresh new paper, do it. Keep a copy of it in your phone. Look at it, right? When they send you text messages or whatever, you have two options. Delete them. Or screenshot them and write yourself a note in a journal, copy and paste it and be like, listen, this person was lying about A, B, C, and D, right? So you have a record of what's going on. Always, always, always keep the truth in front of you. These people do not operate, live, or enjoy being in truth. But the only way they can, you can survive is if you stay in the truth. In life, you're either going through it or growing through it. And I hope this video helps you all to grow through it. Enjoy your day, y'all.